Welcome back to We Play Games. I'm Walker. This is the Vicky3 Academy, and here we're going to just talk about uh, bureaucracy laws. So bureaucracy laws are one of these things that if you don't play a country that starts with a powerful uh, aristocracy, a powerful landed uh, landowner group, then you probably are going to ignore bureaucracy for almost the entire game, if not literally the entire game. Because it's just, it doesn't, it doesn't really make a colossal difference if you're in appointed bureaucrats or elected bureaucrats. Elected bureaucrats is pretty helpful in the late game because of the bureaucracy institution cost multiplier. But like for, for now, um, we are allowed to build really big skyscrapers and I think that's not a bug, but that seems to be a point of contention. And if, if it is a bug and we're not supposed to be able to do that, then you may need to end up going into elected bureaucrats. But, but Largely, this is this video is going to be more helpful um, if you're trying to play with a country that begins with hereditary bureaucrats, because we're going to talk through why it's important to get out of it. So hereditary bureaucrats, we'll talk about all three of these in turn very briefly, right? Bureaucracy population cost multiplier, which just means that if you are in hereditary bureaucrats, it doesn't matter that much if you just have thousands of peasants because they don't do anything in the bureaucracy cost to watch them is like pretty low because you just kind of like wander out to the village and say hey are you guys still like you know i don't know being peasants and then they go yeah we're still being peasants and then and then they come back and they say yeah they're still being peasants so lower bureaucracy cost multiplier just means that countries like ching and um austria hungary and and uh russia can have larger pops although interestingly ching actually st starts in appointed bureaucrats and that's a big difference. So you'll note that there's not just a bureaucracy pop, there's also the landowner's political strength. If you're in a battle with landowners, the more things that you have to attack them, the better. And in this case, hereditary bureaucrats doesn't just give them an extra political strength bonus, it also gives them a method of production. So in the game, most of the time, your methods of production are gonna be coming from your technology. Because the methods of production are kind of just like a metric in and of themselves of like how modern your society is, how modern do they interact with their how their technology, uh, but but it can also be how modern is their culture. And so right now we have a bunch of hereditary bureaucrats as Austria-Hungary because we have hereditary bureaucrats in place. That means that our government pays twelve thousand bureaucrats money. And that means that we're paying them money directly on government wages. So if we wanted to increase the government wa the government wages to give money to the intelligentsia, we would also be giving money to the aristocracy because of those because of those aristocrats here, if the, if all that makes sense. So if you if you want to do high wages on your government so that way you can power up your intelligentsia, you really do need to get out of hereditary bureaucrats. Fortunately, appointed bureaucrats not only isn't like the most offensive thing in the universe to most landowners, it's only a minus five rather than a minus 10. Um, so you're way less likely to start a civil war, but it's, a, it's just a really, really good law. So it's it, it, the fact that you get a 25% intelligentsia political strength is going to definitely help you if you're trying to get towards multiculturalism. The 25% the taxation capacity is also going to be a really big deal because um, it's just going to let you continue to ignore building things to address taxation capacity issues. But I think the thing that I like the best about it is the thing that I've highlighted here, that the professional bureaucrats, that's, an in, that's a dramatic transformation in the number of jobs in your government available to these people. And so if we just, if we just fast enact this... Um, we'll see that there will first be a drop because they've lost the 25% bonus here from, from that and gone to this. But we'll also see that over time, the intelligentsia population is gonna grow, right? They're at 163,000 right now. But we'll, um, you know what, we will go to observe here and then just watch. Uh, and hopefully Austria doesn't do anything ridiculous. But we should be able to watch that that population grow as more and more people are being hired on as as bureaucrats and finding their way into the intelligentsia because you see here that that's where they will be attracted and then of course that will gradually decrease the number of pops available in austrian aristocracy because people are going to be poached into different jobs based off of their qualifications 
So that's it. Um, appointed bureaucrats is very strong. Elected bureaucrats is also very powerful, just 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 to deal with the bureaucracy problems in the late game. But I knew that we could do a, a pretty quick video for for these guys. I'm just gonna do these as like I'm gonna aim for five to eight. Um, so if you find these that's a an endurable length of walker jabbering, then then great because um, that's that's the that's the 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 goal he says, and then jabbers for twenty seconds. All right, bye.